Part 4, Controlling the Ionosphere The High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program, HARP, facility houses many diagnostic instruments for studying the ionosphere, but the highlight is the HF transmitter array. This array consists of 15 by 12 crossed dipole antennas, which together can transmit a total of 3,600 kilowatts of RF power at frequencies from 2.8 to 10 megahertz high frequency range. HARP is located in a region where large natural currents, known as the auroral electrojet, flow through the ionosphere. By turning the HF array on and off, i.e. modulating the HF power at ELF frequencies, we can also modulate the conductivity of the ionosphere at those frequencies. When combined with the electric field that drives the auroral electrojet, the result is a current that oscillates and thus radiates at the modulation frequency an ELF antenna in the ionosphere. These signals can then be detected with nearby receivers shown in the map. Although for many years the US Department of Defense US DOD, suppressed the fact the HARP antenna array was based directly on the Eastland patents and thus could indeed accomplish the entire set of uses he intended for his Tesla-esque invention. This image from the Stanford University VLF Studies Group page on its experiments using the HARP array is lifted directly from the original design plans. The diagram shows how ELF waves are injected into the magnetosphere follow field-aligned ducts, interact with particles, and are received at the conjugate point, exactly as Bernard Eastland had patented. From Eastland's 1987 patent, numbered 4,686,605, entitled Method and Apparatus for Altering a Region in the Earth's Atmosphere, ionosphere and or magnetosphere. In figure 4 we see quite clearly the ionospheric heating method used for lifting or lowering a selected portion of the Earth's magnetic ionosphere by applying ELF radio waves to plasma to create a field-aligned Berkeleyland current. This diagram from the Stanford VLF group's HARP experiments page shows the beam behavior for classic amplitude modulation and new geometric modulation techniques and exemplifies the level and degree of control capable now for using ionospheric heaters on the atmosphere immediately above their locations. At the magnetospheric conjugate point in the southern hemisphere that received the original broadcasts through the ionosphere of the pulsed harp signals. Occasional repeats of their original broadcast remain detectable. The reflection of these signals back from the conjugate point to the harp array's Alaska sensors creates an echo in the pulse rate of the signal that lags by about 8 seconds. The signal repetitively cycles between the broadcast array and the targeted conjugate point without weakening, and even appears to be, to quote the Stanford Study Group, evidence of non-linear amplification of the wave in the magnetosphere. The cause for this is called remnant magnetism. The same effect can occur from a bolt of lightning striking a spot on the soil with any metallic ore in it. Remnant magnetism can also occur along a magnetic field in the Earth's ionosphere 
and the result is to reduce resistance and induce capacitance of a projected ELF wave. Eastland had anticipated the ability to create what the Stanford group call an ELF antenna in the atmosphere using these repeating pulse signals, which the Stanford group call one hops for the signal itself and two hops for the repeating echo effect. In his much more ambitious patent from August 13, 1991, called Method for Producing a Shell of Relativistic Particles at an Altitude Above Earth's Surface, Eastland unveiled the full scope of what his ionospheric heaters were capable of. He proposed using these machines to establish total human control over the planet's electromagnetic field and the creation of a layer of relativistic particles which the U.S. DOD saw as potentially useful in creating a missile defense shield surrounding the entire planet Earth. The only problem is that there are unpredictable results that can arise from such a plan. The first side effect of the HARP array's earliest broadcast signals was, obviously, the unintended discovery of the two-hop repeating echo as the signal bounced back from the targeted conjugation point due to remnant magnetism. To illustrate the unintended danger of even this already accomplished effect, we turn to the study of brainwave entrainment, where we find the origins for the use of various types of tonal pulses of audible sound to affect alteration to one's natural brainwave rhythms. The goal of brainwave entrainment is to induce a scalar wave scattering field condition of consciousness by combining one's own brainwave rhythms with a counterpoint pulse sequence of audible sound. This is accomplished by overlapping isochronic tones, evenly spaced pulses of the same pitch, and monaural beats, that is, two pulsed sound waves of the same amplitude, volume, but of different pitches, tones. The result of their combination is an effect called binaural beats, which are the subsonic difference between two tones close in frequency, pulsed at a regular or offset rhythm. The binaural beat produced by harp would be represented by the 8 second gap between the one hop signal pulse and the two hop delayed echo.